Imagine stepping into a school where every corner radiates positivity, where the scholars feel empowered and valued, and where the educators know that they're more than classroom teachers, but they are instead transformational change agents. This is not a distant dream. Rather, it's a transformational opportunity waiting to happen with visionary leadership. In today's episode, we're gonna explore how to transform school culture through school leadership. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, get ready to take some notes, because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Amerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational leadership journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit the subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes. The heartbeat of every school lies in the school's culture. The ability for a school to have an identity, a place and a space that feels positive, it feels supportive, it feels caring and nurturing. This is at the heart of making sure that we have a high functioning school, a high functioning classroom, a high functioning organization. Today, we wanna to really explore three strategies that will help us as educational leaders create, craft, and shape our school culture in such a way that we can use that enhanced school culture to get better outcomes, to increase student achievement, to increase morale and excitement and engagement around employees and employee performance. So we're gonna jump right in. We're gonna give you three strategies, and this is gonna help you go further, faster as you transform the school culture at your school. Let's get started. All right, strategy number one. As leaders who wanna transform school culture, we first wanna establish vision and develop shared values. This is at the core of every high performing organization. We wanna be able to create a space and a place that focuses not only on the academic performance and academic growth of our students, but also the holistic development of our school community our staff, our students, our families. If we have a vision of where we wanna take that school, if we have a vision of where we wanna take our students and what we wanna create for them, that is something that now we know we can shoot for. We can collectively put our arms together and move in that direction. And the way we do that is by developing shared values. When we develop those shared values, it's, it's a set of things that we deeply believe that we need to hold true and then we need to focus on and commit to in order to move us forward. Leaders, we have to be the stewards of how do we navigate, take the community, take our staff, take our students through this winding process of what our vision is and what our shared values are going to be. When we're able to do that, now we can create a document, we can create a guide that all of our folks who are involved in that organization can choose to be a part of, can choose to follow, can choose to be held accountable to. So we wanna think about as leaders, like how do we create this opportunity? How do we create this place and space where we can establish a vision and develop shared values? So there are specific strategies that you can use. So let's talk about what those specific strategies are. The first thing you can do is you can create workshops and meetings that elicit and gather input and feedback from the stakeholders, from your students, from your staff, from your parents, from your community, but really opening yourself up to be transparent and open to get feedback, to gather information, to humble yourself and explain to folks that you understand that you don't have all the answers and you need their help, you need their assistance, you need their voice. This invites people into a conversation. It helps them buy into and own and support and defend the vision and the values that get established. So that's one strategy. Another strategy is to embed all of these shared values once you develop them, embed them in all things throughout the school. Make them visible, make them evident, make them live and breathe as a part of the organization. We talk about them. We talk about them openly in faculty meetings. We talk about them openly uh, during the daily announcements. We talk about them openly at student-based events. We talk about them openly at parent engagement opportunities. We talk about who we are, what we believe, and what we will continue to aspire to become. 
these are the types of strategies that will allow us to not only create the vision, but also to deeply embed those shared values into who we are as an organization. So the reality and the impact of that is once you have that shared vision and once you have those values, you can now foster a high performing organization, an organization that knows who they are, knows where they are, and also more importantly, knows who they want to become. And as a leader, my job, our job as leaders is to create the conditions in the environment for these things to happen and for these types of activities to establish the vision and to develop these shared values to be able to grow, develop and, and, and blossom under our leadership. That's quintessential to transforming school culture is creating those types of environments. And that's strategy number one. Transforming school culture leadership strategy number two. This is going to be really about kind of giving up some of our power as leaders or sharing it, if you will. So strategy number two is this. You're going to foster collaborative leadership and empowerment. So what does this mean? We want to create the opportunity to lift other people up, to get more people involved and to foster this engagement by giving people the opportunity to lead, giving people the opportunity to share, giving people the opportunity to share in the decisions that are going to affect them. And you do that by creating a collaborative leadership environment. One where you have meetings where there's a flow of exchange of information and dialogue, where we kind of take off our hierarchical hats and everybody's kind of equal and everybody's kind of on the same playing field and everybody's insights and wisdom and knowledge is seen for what it is to be valuable, regardless of who it's coming from. That collaborative spirit, creates a new space and a new place where people can feel that they are able to share and that they are able to contribute at a high level. We as leaders can create the environment for that to happen. We can choose to be collaborative. We can choose to create empowerment for people, people who customarily sometimes feel like they don't have a say in the decisions, that they don't have the power to decide. We can create that space. If we want to transform school culture, we need to intentionally create the space where we are being collaborative. We are relieving ourselves of having all the onus and all the power and all the influence. And we're giving some of that back in exchange for getting the best answers, getting the best perspectives, getting the best decisions before us. So some ways that we can do that, some real concrete strategies, first and foremost is implement shared decision-making models, having leadership teams, having instructional leadership teams, having parent advisories, having student advisories, where you create these shared governance models, these shared decision-making models, where you're getting input from lots of different stakeholders at various levels of the organization. That's a great strategy to create engagement. That's a great strategy to create kind of an empowerment and collective and collaborative leadership. So use those shared decision-making models, use those shared decision-making bodies, if you will, to get good feedback, to get good input. Additionally, offering professional development opportunities that are rich in elevating the voices of other people, not just the administrative folks who are delivering that professional development, leveraging the knowledge, the experience, the insight, the expertise, and the professional, the professional gravitas of your teachers, of your staff, to be able to be up front, out front and center, empowering them to lead, empowering them to be in a position to have influence and have impact. That's a great empowerment strategy, but also when you divest some of that power to do the professional development and do the professional learning and actually be a consumer of that, now be a participant rather than the facilitator, you're being collaborative, right? You're spreading out some of that influence and that impact across your organization. And as you share that influence, more and more of your staff will feel engaged, empowered, and, and excited to be a part of the organization they're creating. This is how we shift school culture. This is how we shift and transform school culture to a more positive slant, to a more positive environment. So share with us in the comments below, you know, what are the types of challenges as you're thinking about being a more collaborative leader? You're thinking about a leader who wants to be more empowering of your staff and of your community. What challenges do you face? What are some of the issues? 
What are some of the problems that you've come across as you've tried to be more inclusive, as you've tried to be more empowering? Share that with us in the comments below so we can kind of help you to navigate some of those challenges and give you ideas, tips, and strategies of how to navigate that as we move forward. Share that with us in the comments below and let's talk about strategy number three. School culture transformation, leadership strategy number three. Building positive relationships and community engagement. It is critical to have positive relationships all throughout your school community. Positive relationships between teachers and students, positive relationships between teachers and families, positive relationships between families and administrators, administrators and staff. This is, this is again foundational to having a positive school culture is when we have positive relationships and positive communication structures where dialogue and communication and discussion can happen. Because at the end of the day, we have to spend a lot of time together as organizations. In these organizations, we spend lots of time together. Our students are with us the vast majority of the day. Our staff members come before the school day, stay after the school day. Our administrators come before the school day, stay after the school day. Our families are coming in throughout the day. Our families are coming into evening events activities and weekends and all these stuff. There's all these different types of interactions and all these different moments and times when we have the ability to spend time together. So having positive relationships, having that ability to engage one another and develop that shared understanding, those shared values back to strategy number one, having those shared values of who we are, what we believe in, what we want, what do we want for our kids? What do we want for our communities? This is at the root of creating those positive environments. And so we wanna highlight how do we build, develop, and nurture those positive relationships? How do you build that in? First and foremost, we're talking about two-way dialogue, always opening those communication lines, having different ways, all different types of opportunities to engage with folks, to talk to each other, digitally, audio-wise, face-to-face, in-person, using technology, leveraging technology, empowering people with information. Because remember, there's an old saying, you know, information is like oxygen. When people don't have it, they begin to hallucinate. They begin to just make things up. They start to come up with their own conclusions about why it is that you didn't tell them something, why it is that you're hiding information. So let's talk about some strategies that we can use as leaders to really work on building positive rapport and community engagement. First and foremost, you gotta have strong systems of communication. Making sure that you have regular, frequent modes of communication where you can share with families, where you can share with students, where you can share with staff, the things that you're working on, the things that the school's working on, and the things that the community and all the stakeholders need to be aware of. And we're using all those different modes of communication. We're sending out things that are written. We're recording things. We're using technology to leverage things through a digital platform like texting. We're using little short video clips. We're posting on Instagram. We're posting on Facebook. We're post posting on YouTube. We're using all these different ways to communicate who we are and what we're working on. This is the fastest way to build a relationship, a positive relationship, because when people feel that they have the information, again, they feel like they can protect and support and defend the things that we are doing as leaders and the things that we're doing around their particular school community. Additionally, we wanna figure out ways to continue to develop and implement programs that are focused on the overall social emotional development, empathy, compassion, caring and nurturing for our scholars. They're the, they're the centerpiece of all of this work. And so the way we, the immediate way that we build relationships with our staff and with our families is to take good care of our scholars, to make sure that their needs are being met, to make sure that they have a rich environment by which they can grow and develop and explore and learn all kinds of new and cutting edge things. So as we, as leaders are creating those types of environments where we're having these positive interactions, we're having these positive relationships, we're creating these community engagement on ramps. These are all things that will help us move the school culture forward, move the school culture into a positive direction. This is gonna be at the center of all of our work because as educational leaders, we wanna make sure that we're creating that environment, we're developing that environment. Positive relationships and active community engagement 
builds a school that we all can be proud of. It builds a school community that we all can root for, we can cheer for its success. As leaders, again, we create the environment for good things to happen. We create the environment for our scholars to thrive. We create the environment for our educators to go bigger and further and faster in their pursuits as professional educators. We create the space where our parents can feel engaged and feel that they're actively involved in a part of their students' learning, their students' growth and development as positive citizens within our democratic society. These are the things that we do as we transform and create positive school culture. And that's all about the most effective strategies of being an educational leader. So if you want to learn more about being an effective educational leader, you can check out this next video. It's going to give you good tips, good strategies that are going to help you go further faster in your educational leadership journey. And we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody.